Wolverine is a classic character. He has survived almost every major Marvel event, and he's been on practically every team in the Marvel Universe. And now, it's time for Wolverine to die. Wolverine was recently attacked by a miniverse virus that was attempting to take control of his body. In order to fend it off, his healing factor was completely burned out and is useless now. He saw all of the greatest minds in the Marvel Universe to see if they can figure out a way to reactivate his healing factor. But eventually, he ended up at Reed Richards, and Reed informed him that he's basically screwed. The only thing even allowing him to move right now with that much metal in his body is the fact that he has super strength and super speed. Heck, he shouldn't even use his claws. He can get an affection just from them popping out and going back in all the time. And now, he stands in the British Columbia, looking at a sunset. His time is at an end and he knows it. But how did he get here? Well, a contract has been placed on Logan's head. And whoever it is that is sending everyone after him wants him captured. But even without his healing factor, Logan is still a force to be reckoned with. And he beats everyone into the ground until he finds out that the woman who put the contract out on his head was Viper. Once Logan works his way into her organization with some rather insanely awesome fighting, he discovers that it wasn't even her who put the contract out on him. In fact, she subcontracted it to all of those mercenaries. But since Logan worked his way all the way up to talk to her directly, and she has a soft spot for him, she decides to let him defeat Sabretooth, and if he can, she'll tell him who the client is that hired her to subcontract all the mercenaries. Logan and Sabretooth start their fight once again, a fight that has gone on for ages. This is a never-ending fight. They're both equally matched, as they always have been. So Lady Deathstrike jumps in to uneven the fight by taking out Sabretooth. And she lets Sabretooth go at Logan's request. And Logan realizes that Viper slipped away. Deathstrike informs him that Viper doesn't matter because somebody is hunting them. Somebody is hunting their kind, not just Logan. Deathstrike has tracked this contract back to Ojin. And she wants Logan's help to defeat Ojin and figure out what's going on. But then, she realizes that he's defective and useless to her. So she'll just end his life right here. But not before Kitty Pride helps him out and saves Logan's ass. She quickly dispatches Lady Deathstrike by phasing through her hand and forcing it to explode. Deathstrike takes off and Kitty sticks Logan with the regeneration serum. It's not as strong as his old healing factor, but it'll keep him kicking. So they sit down and they reflect. She tells Logan, don't kill yourself. And he tells her that he's not trying to. He wants to grow old. He can finally have a normal life. And these people, they're trying to kill him. He needs to find out who put the contract out on him so that he can end this before they kill him. And Kitty's proud of Logan and gives him a kiss, telling her to take her right now. But Logan knows this isn't her. This isn't Kitty Pride. They've never been like this. They've never had a relationship, a physical one like this. This is Ojin in Kitty Pride's body. Logan quickly grabs some samurai armor and a sword, and he gets Ojin out of Kitty Pride's body. And Ojin runs away. But not before Kitty Pride heard who was behind all of this. Who was behind everything? Who is trying to kill Logan? Abraham Cornelius, the man who created the method of bonding adamantium to bones. He wants the adamantium metals, the weapons, and even the X Weapon X personnel so that he can get all of the adamantium he wants back. After getting his hands on some more of the regeneration serum, Logan heads off of the remote base in Nevada where Cornelius is hiding. He tapes some blades to his hand since he can't use his claws right now, and he starts slicing his way into the building. And he eventually gets to Abraham Cornelius, who then explains everything. He wants to be remembered for making a real super soldier no matter what it takes. He'll cut up hundreds of bodies trying to find a way to bond adamantium to their bones. But even with his new regeneration serum, it's not enough. He needs to take Wolverine's healing factor in order to put it into someone so that they won't die from the adamantium bonding. He tells Logan, just give him the healing factor and be a part of something bigger, something more amazing. And Logan just laughs because he doesn't have the healing factor anymore. Dr. Cornelius tells him that that's just a shame. And he presses a button to inject all of the poor innocents full of adamantium and distract Logan while he runs away. But Logan won't let those innocents die. And he pulls out his claws so he can break the adamantium vats before they can even touch the people who won't survive it. The heated, melted adamantium pours out and it coats Logan's body. And he reaches for the regeneration serum so that he can stick it into the innocents so that they'll survive. He then slowly lumbers after Cornelius, dripping adamantium, covering his whole body. This ends now. 
As he walks out to see Cornelius on the ground begging for his life, Cornelius yells at him. I was going to achieve something! What have you ever done with your life except kill people? And Logan thinks as he stabs Cornelius in the chest. What has he done? He's fought for his life. He's enjoyed the good times. He's experienced love and he's experienced war. He honored the memory with a school and he felt honor and he's had enough. With Cornelius dead, he walks to the edge of the platform and he falls to his knees and he allows the adamantium to harden. He can't heal anymore and that adamantium is indestructible and he can't even breathe. It's time for Wolverine to die and that time has finally come. Hey guys, it's Benny and I'm standing here with Erica Schultz and she just wants to tell you about her books. Okay, well I've got M3, which is an original crime drama about an assassin and the FBI agent tracking her down. And we have 11 issues out of 12. It's a 12 issue limited series. I've got a fantastic story about Winston Churchill finding a time machine in 1942 and he's trying to kill the Nazis but it doesn't exactly work out that way. And then lastly, M3 was what got me a job with Marvel Comics and ABC TV writing the original graphic novel for the Revenge TV series. Uh, it's on ABC on Sunday nights. We're in season four already. Thank you so much. Come by. We are in booth 1046 in uh, Small Press. Thanks, guys. All right, and that's this booth. We'll hit the next one now. Thank you, guys.